Hello and welcome to CompNow's webinar around managing devices with Jamp School. My name is Richard Gines and shortly I'll be introducing you to Francesco from Jamp. He'll be presenting a little around the product. Later on, we will be having uh, an opportunity for Q&A. Uh, if you have any questions, just drop them into the chat and we'll try and address them as we go, or maybe we'll address them at the end of the session. So CompNow, a little bit about CompNow. We're a 100% privately owned company, we're wholly Australian owned. Uh, we are the largest uh, education and Apple reseller and integrator in Australia. Uh, We've got offices in five states and we've also got warehouses to support you in those states. Um, we've also got training, uh, uh, training uh, setups in Sydney and in Melbourne, though we train around Australia as well. More on that a little later. Our traditional business units are on the left-hand side. We've got the, uh, a strong engineering group. Uh, we have a dedicated education sales team, um, as well as corporate government and our service centres. So we're Apple authorised service providers, which means that we can do Apple warranty work and authorised Apple repairs on Apple devices as part of our ecosystem. Uh, we've also got a very good AV team that's um, growing strongly at the moment um, and we also have a professional training team so we do school PD in schools around Apple devices and also around curriculum development and we're an Apple authorised training provider as well. We've got a strong relationship with Jamf, we've been working with them for many years. We about a quarter of a million seats under Jamf management um, and we've trained 37 of our engineers on Jamf products so we have Jamf certified engineers at Comp now. Uh, I think that's probably a good point to bring Francesca in. Um, he's going to discuss Jamf school and then I'll come back a little later on. Francesca. Hi, thank you Richard. Good day everyone. Today we're just going to go through um, Few information about Jam School and uh, how it, you know some of the functionality will actually help your school to achieve the best with your Apple devices. So here at Jam, we are all about helping your organization succeed with Apple. I take care of all the education sector here at Jam for the ANZ, and as uh, Obviously, Richard was mentioning before, our relationship with CompNow at Apple has been uh, a long one. Our mission has always been, uh, you know, helping the organization succeed with Apple and helping schools and universities succeed with Apple. And we have had that focus for the past 18 years. Um, just to give you some numbers about Jamf, um, we have more than 30,000 organizations that rely on Jamf to manage over 17 million Apple devices. 14,000 global K-12 schools, 1,000 global universities, 9 million teachers and students empowered by Jamf, and 44 of the 46 top universities in, in ANZ are using Jamf, and 22 of the 25 top uh, tech companies are using Jamf around the world, including Apple. In terms of the ecosystem, since 2002, Jamf has been laser focused on helping um, organization succeeded with Apple and with the Apple ecosystem. And with that comes obviously the support for the Mac, the iPad, the iPhone, and the Apple TV. Our Apple exclusive focus means you get unparalleled support for your Apple initiatives, like how Jam Global Engineering Team is 100% focus, focused on delivering the new feature and a better scalability for Apple in general. Since 2012, Jamf has cons consistently delivered same-day support for new Apple operating system releases. This year, Jamf supported iOS 14, iPadOS 14, and tvOS 14 on release day, September 16th. And macOS 11 Big Sur released a couple of weeks ago. It's already been supported by, by Jamf. The same-day support is a major differentiator that put Jamf um, you know, uh, on the top and, and becomes to make it become the standard for Apple management. Um, and you, every time you know, um, we, we have a, um, Apple releasing an operating system, uh, many admin enjoy the same-day support because it enabled them make the latest operating system available to the end user immediately without problems. 
the gene test in the new OS to ensure the consistent performance across their environments. Now, if we have to talk about GEMF and education, we just need to go back to our GEMF platform for Apple and understand kind of a little bit of the GEMF portfolio. We have uh, different products like GEMF Connect, um, our simple authentication account setup, um, and GEMF Now on demand management for business, um, and GEMF Pro and GEMF School for education and obviously for, for bigger customer. Uh, that they, they want the, the reliability on Apple devices. GemProtect, which is our enterprise endpoint protection purpose built for Apple, and our Gem for Nation, which is uh, our big um, um, our big place where all the different engineers exchange ideas and, and go there to find support about Apple-related issues or Apple support in general. Um, not only related to GEMF, we have a lot of a lot of people there that they actually uh, they working with Apple ecosystems and they are not uh, GEMF customers. So what we do uh, uh, obviously at GEMF, we we call it you know GEMF protect. We protect your Apple endpoints, we manage your Apple ecosystem, and we connect your Apple user to enterprise resources. Now, if we focus on GEMF School, GEMF School was designed to be education focused. Uh, simple to set up to allow teachers uh, and administrators to set up uh, the MDM very quickly and uh, without have to to deal with complicated technical uh, requirements. Um, it's got a very easy iOS configuration. It's a it com completely support the full MDM framework made by Apple. It, it's got a very easy macOS management features and it supports the education apps. And I just want to focus on those. Empowering teachers, parents, and students with GEM for us is made through different applications. And there are three key applications that at GEM we use every day in our schools and, and universities. These apps are students, GEM, student, GEM teacher, and GEM parents. GEM, GEM students, uh, it's all about personalize and take control of the learning of your students. Teacher is about teaching with Apple devices and power personalized learning in the classroom. And parent, it's, it's all about maximize the learning at home, guide children homework and using the device. So let's focus on GEM teachers first. It, the teacher app uh, is designed to meet the school's uh, needs and the teacher's needs. It's got functionality such as classroom control to set and clear restriction, to install apps available provided by the school, uh, lock into an app or set of apps for your exams, Ring the bell for remote learning. Uh, with, with COVID this year, we've seen that functionality used quite a bit. Um, and obviously, one important feature is also Eastern mes messaging to help individual students with questions to the teachers, enable students to message the teacher and ask for anything related to the lesson that they're doing, and send a message during group assignments so to a, a, a specific um, student or a group of, of students. One other important feature is digital lesson planning. You can, where the teacher can create a lesson in advance, whitelist apps and website, um, set device restriction. If you are during an exam or you don't want your kids playing games while they are in the classroom, and apply app category lock. So if your kids are trying to download an application that they should not be downloading within the school environment, you can lock that. Now let's talk about students. And talking about students, I want to focus on the GEM student apps. The GEM student app, as I said before, is all about personalization and empowerment of the student. Give the student the ability to install pre-approved apps and books and even documents. If there isn't a day, you can give the student the ability to update this easily right within the app without the needs of them to go to the app store. As I said, what I allow is install pre-approved apps, iBooks and documents, update apps and OS updates, send message to the teacher, raise hand for remote learning. Those are all um, you know, very important features. And uh, with those features, we see also the need to empower you know, the parents of these kids to understand uh, how they're using their device and to help them when they're doing homework from home. That's where we introduce the parents apps. 
the parents app it's all about empowering and engaging parents in your one-to-one -one ipad initiative so with obviously the many school access to remote learning um, the reality is as parents we have to navigate digital life at all but that's not always easy and and um, particularly as the kids tend to know more about technology than us so we want to make it easy for parents to get involved in the child's learning while making it easy to guide the child the children into homework time without distraction uh, we may also want to restrict to access to certain apps such as games for a set period of time and and for that so you know gen parents can let parents know when the kids reach a certain place like school um, um, through a location-based notification so to repeat as a parent you will have access to control access to games manage to, uh, the use of social media messaging very important especially in the secondary schools environment and get notification and set restriction based on location and that's it for me today thank you for listening and now back to richard thank you francesca thank you um i want to address uh the you mentioned the uh, francesca mentioned the ease of administration of jamp school and i really want to address that in uh, in several directions so jamp school uh, is often or uh, mdms and um, ipad management uh, device management in schools is often done by teachers or other staff many smaller schools don't have full-time dedicated it staff so um, the person who's administering the uh, uh, device management may well be uh, uh, somebody who's not necessarily highly technical. Um, I, when I was in America, I came. Uh, I was introduced to the concept of the accidental administrator, where uh, in some American schools, it's actually the bus driver be, who's managing the iPad because it, they're the guys with the time between delivering and picking up students. Um, so in our in Australia, we we often find it's librarians or classroom assistants who might well have the responsibility of looking after the iPad fleet. So let's look at, at the ease of management of, of, of JAMP School. So when we go to the uh, JAMP School interface, we see, uh, when we go to the portal and we go to the dashboard, we see a, a nice clean, clear overview. And there's a nice big button at the top called Synchronize, which when you click that, brings in uh, your apps that you have purchased in Apple School Manager and brings them into Jamp School for you to manage. It also brings any devices that are in um, Apple School Manager, which means that they're then supervised if they've been brought in from Apple School Manager. And we also uh, get any managed Apple IDs brought over if that's what you want and that's what you've set up. So um, looking down the left hand side at this very clearly laid out uh, console, there's a devices tab. When we click on the devices tab and then click on devices, we see a list of the iPad and if we're, uh, or um, Apple TVs or Macs even. So when we click on the devices and we click on a device record, we can see information uh, about the device and we can go into deeper management. And then a little further down the uh, devices tab we also have the DEP tab so Apple now are calling DEP or auto, Apple automated enrollment so uh, when you bring we bring devices in from Apple school manager they're, they're supervised and our jamp school knows about the devices before um, they've even been enrolled into jamp school which means we can start to manage them even before even before we enroll them and um, so we can have settings waiting for those devices when they appear uh, going down a little further, we have the Users tab, and you'll see here that each record has got, we've got the ability to load a photograph of each student. So this is a student record, so we associate our students with the devices that they're using, which then means that uh, we, we, know, um, we, we can know who's, whose iPad is which for management, and we can also upload photographs, and we'll see the significance of that later on. I'm using emoji because I don't want to use real students. A little further down under the users tab we have classes so classes is where we can set up our classes that Francesca was talking about so that teachers can manage their students actively during the classroom and can manage their lessons um, uh, actively uh, we can also use these classes uh, in uh, Apple's app the Apple's education app called classroom Apple's classroom app as well so they're very very straightforward to set up we can click on the add class um, button um, 
I've got a class entered here. I haven't added any teachers to this class, but you can add more than one teacher to a class. So you're not restricted to one teacher. So if you're team teaching, you can have multiple teachers in the, in the classroom or in the group. Um, coming to device management, um, the devices are managed in the Apple world with uh, management files called profiles. And uh, we can make profiles or management files which manage whole, uh, the, all our devices, or we can make profiles that manage subsets of those devices or devices that are associated with particular classes. Very easy to create a, a class, I'll come, which I'll come back to in a second. I just want to emphasize the importance of supervision. So. Apple recognized two forms of device, uh, which is basically the uh, b uh, unmanaged b uh, YOD devices, which can then be enrolled into a management server, or devices which have been wiped and had a supervision setting uh, pro um, certificate put onto the device. And there are two ways of doing that. One is to use a free app called Apple Configurator on, a Mac, on an Apple Mac and you, you have to wipe the device to supervise it. The other way to do it is to put the devices into Apple School Manager. Now, as a reseller, this is a, a service that uh, CompNow can do. We can put the serial numbers of those devices into School Manager, and when you click the Synchronize button, they will come over into uh, Jamf School and be supervised, which gives us, if you look here on the slide, you'll see that there are many settings that are reserved for only supervised devices. So um, in a school environment, I would strongly recommend that devices are supervised, which means either the devices are in School Manager or that they're wiped using Apple Configurator and, and then um, uh, enrolled into Jamf School. If we click on the Create Profile button, you'll see that we can make management settings for iOS devices, so like iPads, iPod Touches, um, Apple TVs, um, uh, Mac and Macs as well. Though I would say, if you have a large fleet of Macs, um, rather than um, say a, a, a handful of them in a, in a school, if you have a large fleet, fleet of um, uh, 50, 100, 2000, whatever your fleet is, you're probably better at look, uh, looking at Jamf Pro to manage your devices. But for a small number of devices doing light management, Jamf School is good, but it's excellent at managing iOS devices. And, um, and small fleets are max. Going on on how easy it is to use Jamf School, um, there are walkthroughs, there are uh, uh, assistants for virtually everything that we can do in Jamf School. So we're making a management profile here. We choose the platform, we set a name, and we can set a time filter as well. So devices that are going home, we can say, we can put more restrictive settings on the devices in school and then leave the Jamf parent app um, up to, and leave it up to the parents to manage the device at home. So we'll remove them. We can we can have only the, the, the most restrictive settings in a profile that only apply during school hours. And you'll see also that we can um, not install the profile during school holidays. So. Um, once you've made the profile, you can then go in and uh, set up the settings. So here we can see that we can remove social media during school hours. So anything that's in the App Store under social media, um, um, anything that's under the App Store of the social media, then we, um, we can restrict that in, uh, the, under the, the social media heading, we can restrict that in school time. Um, we can also set safe lists of apps so that they don't, um, block lists of apps so that we don't want. So they might not fall into a particular category, but we can actually block spe specific applications during school hours. Um, um, I've just got a quick question that's come in here. Um, the question is, with a uh, Jamf teacher, can the user see what's on the student's device screen? No, they can't, but you can use Apple's uh, classroom app and the classroom app can use the same groups that you've got in Jamf School. So the two apps, classroom app and Jamf School app, are complementary. They do some of the same things, but um, one of the things that uh, Apple reserved to themselves, because it's actually a security issue, being able to look at somebody else's screen, they reserve it to only their app, to the classroom app. It's the only app that I'm aware of which will show you what's on an iPad screen. So um, yes, you can use the same class setup, and the teacher can have both apps installed. And if the teacher wants to see what's on a student's iPad, uh, he or she can flick over to classroom app and do it that way. Um, 
they're complementary apps, they're not mutually exclusive. Um, just going back to management profiles, in this case we're blocking apps during school hours or um, permanently um, if we choose to. And again on ease of use, if a school wants to um, set holidays so that some profiles or so some management settings don't work during the holidays. We go to organisation, select holidays, click on add holiday and here because I'm in Victoria I'm adding the Melbourne Cup holiday to the calendar um, and uh, I apply that and when I have applied that profiles or management settings that are set not to work during holidays won't work during that holiday and we can set date ranges for holidays as well so you can set your summer holidays and your autumn holidays and so forth. A bit further down, uh, signing apps, probably the most common task that people want to do with devices from the get-go is to assign apps to devices. So these apps have been brought in um, with the synchronised button and there's another synchronised button at the top of the, um, top of the, the pane where we are synchronising with Apple School Manager, we can bring the apps in and then the, uh, the administrator can just go through and cl um, click any of the apps that they want to assign to a group of devices. They click on the Edit Scope button, which appears automatically for them, and then they can add the groups. And that's a pop-up menu at the top. I'm, I didn't take a proper screenshot of that, but that's a pop-up menu at the top and we can get to choose which groups we add. Uh, if we choose Automatic Installation, um, and assign it to the device and save, then the, um, the apps will then be pushed out to the devices the next time that they're connected to the internet or the next time they're connected to the network and connected to the internet and uh, check in with, um, they'll get a, a push notification telling them that they've got the app is there to be installed and it'll install automatically. If it's a supervised app, uh, uh, sorry, if it's a supervised device, uh, the user, there's no interaction with the user, the app just gets installed. Uh, again, this is a uh, teacher app, so this, we're looking at the teacher app pane on the left hand side and one of the things that the teacher can do is request apps. So uh, Fran Francesca's um, talked about um, some of the management things that you can do from within in the teacher app, but uh, I'm just going to address requesting apps. So the teacher can click on um, app requests and if they click on the I button they get told uh, how to request an app and they also can see the state of any app they requested. So a teacher's teaching, they know there's an app that will actually be appropriate to their class, uh, they can request an app, and um, in the pane, uh, under the apps pane, there's a requested apps pane here, and those app requests pop up, and somebody with the authority to purchase apps, or maybe they're free apps, can go into Apple School Manager, uh, buy, buy the apps, purchase the apps, and then they can be reassigned uh, assigned to the devices. So very, um, everything is very well documented in Apple School, uh, in Jamf School, um, in Jamf School. Uh, here, if we're um, adding users, we can uh, go to the organization tab, select import, synchro uh, in synchronize, and it tells us how to do it. Uh, so this, is, this is one of the beauties of Jamf School, we'll walk through nearly everything. Um, down at the bottom, there's a little uh, download template CSV file, so we download our spreadsheet, we modify our spreadsheet with the users that we want, and if we want to add groups, we can add groups there. Even if the groups don't exist in Jamf School, they get created when I upload this. It's lovely, it's really nice. So I upload the users and we then get a pane um, telling us that, that it's, it's working through those users. Similarly, if I click on the um, upload photos link in the uh, import synchronize, again, it tells me I can import JPEGs and um, 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 I can import JPEGs and so on. The question is, can everything be done on a Windows user? Yes, um, the, uh, yes, it can. It's the the the, inter, the, um, the console is a web. Uh, it's part of the MDM specification that you can access the, through web browsers. So almost any platform that has a, 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 a an up to date web browser. There are certain requirements for the uh, web browsers, and I, um, we can put that into the follow up email later on. So there are requirements for web browsers. Basically. All modern, H, um, all modern web browsers, very recent web browsers, will support Jamf, Jamf School. 
Um, so yeah, so we can click on that. We can even get a demo um, zip file with our PNGs um, to see how to format it. I rename all my PNG files or JPEG files with the username, and I up zip it and then upload it to Jamf School. And hey, that's how I get my pictures into Jamf School. There's no need to set up um, other servers. There's no nothing complicated about this at all. It's very straightforward. And the beauty of this. Now, when the teacher, when she uh, looks in Apple uh, uh, Classroom app, or when he, the teacher, when he looks in um, the uh, Jamf Teacher app, we see the students with their faces, which makes it very easy. I spent a long time, I spent 20 years working in a school, and after, after a while, when it's your fifth class of the day, it can be, can be difficult. So it's easy when you've got the pictures there um, to manage the students. Now, Jump School appears very simple. It does have great power. We can do smart groups in Jump School. And when we make device smart groups, we have a lot of criteria. We can um, have multiple rules. Um, either all rules need to be met or um, only one or more rules need to be met. So we can actually make quite, quite sophisticated, dynamic device groups based on users, groups, um, device types, and so on and so forth, which makes it easy to manage fleets of Macs because you can actually have devices adding themselves to device groups or automatically because it's a dynamic um, group. So there is, there is power in Jamf, um, Jamf School. Um, uh, so don't, um, don't be fooled by the, the, the simple interface. Um, Jamf School, one of the things that Jamf have done recently is to add a superb help document, uh, uh, and this is found under the support tab at the bottom on the left-hand side. It's task-based, so before you begin or getting started with a setup assistant when you set up Jamf School, and then you can also search this, so it's very, uh, very good. I, I must admit, I use this. If I'm, if I'm looking for something in Jamf School, I'll click on the search and I'll search this. It's very good. Um, so um, that brings me to the end of uh, my little demonstration, as it were. If you're interested in using Jamf School, um, you can use um, you can ask us for a trial. We have the ability to set up a trial for you, um, and uh, we also um, do um, Jamf School training. So going back to the accidental administrator, uh, you might be lucky and have full-time IT staff. If your IT staff have got experience with MDM and Apple School Manager, they easily be capable of setting this up themselves. Um, if you've got an ICT teacher uh, who's um, highly techni uh, technically competent, not, not, I wouldn't say highly technically competent, but you've got a uh, digital learning teacher or um, an ICT teacher, they may well be able to set it up. I would suggest, though, even if uh, you have MDM experience, that it might be worthwhile doing uh, Jamf School training. We run a Jamf School and Apple School Manager two-day course, um, though we can tailor that depending on people's experience to maybe be a little shorter. And we often find that people who have come and done that course go away and set up Jamf School and use it and um, manage it uh, successfully the following year with very few support calls to us, if any. Um, um, Jamf, um, we've posted a trial link for Jamf School in the chat, so if you're interested in uh, uh, obtaining a trial for Jamf School, um, uh, do look in the chat. Um, we've got a question here, which I might actually throw to Francesca. Uh, we've got the question is, what's the key difference between Jamf School and Jamf Pro? I think I could address it, but I think you, I'll, I'll give that one to you, seeing as you, it's your field. No problem. Yeah. Um, so the biggest difference between the two is obviously uh, Jam School was designed to be uh, easy to configure, especially iOS focused, as as Richard have mentioned before. Um, Jam School can absolutely do all um, all the management that you require on the Mac side, uh, but for bigger deployments on the Mac side and things like uh, you know in a huge interaction and uh, integration with third-party apps uh, and more complicated setup on the Mac side, scripting, etc. Um, Gem Pro it's a much better um, solution for that. So if you have a complicated setup, especially based on on the Macs with bigger fleets of devices, something like you know 500 plus uh, Macs, then obviously Gem Pro is a better product for you. It's more focused on the Mac. 
So that is the biggest difference, uh, I would say. Um, in terms of uh, obviously uh, iOS uh, devices, uh, the same functionality are available on both platform, on both Gem School and Gem Pro. So we don't have uh, any difference there. Uh, but obviously the Mac is uh, is where, you know, it depends if you have to push applications and put some restrictions, all based by profiles and, you know, the MDM framework, then Gem School does a fantastic job at that. If you require more advanced integration, third party apps, uh, integration with a um, few tools that you might have in a bigger organization like a college or a university, then Gem Pro is definitely the, the solution to go for. Yeah, that's great. Um, so yeah, uh, in terms of setup, as I said, if you uh, if you do the training, you often um, find that you might not you might find you don't need a great deal of uh, support. Uh, however, if you're uh, if you, if you wish to, we we have CompNow engineers who are certified, uh, champ certified, who can come in or remotely set up, um, depending on the environment, um, uh, set up champ school for you. So we can engage CompNow engineering for that and for ongoing support as well. Um, I'm just looking to see if we've got anything else. Um, yes, uh, the, yes, you, we, if you have, um, there's a question here about um, Jamf, I'll just go back a slide. Um, it was a question here about Jamf uh, School and multi-user iPad. So, Apple have a concept uh, which is uh, shared iPad. We sometimes refer to this as um, S, uh, a shared iPad with a capital S, and there's a legacy shared iPad, and I'll address both of those. Uh, shared iPad requires managed Apple IDs, which we can set up an Apple School Manager. Yes, we can. They also, the devices need to um, um, uh, be supervised, and they can be then signed into with uh, managed Apple IDs. And so essentially you have multiple accounts on the shared iPad. Uh, I would, um, you can manage them very well, I would say with um, Jamf School, that it, it's perfectly possible. Apple would suggest though that a one-to-one -one iPad deployment is by far the better experience. Uh, shared iPad does work. Um, there are some uh, what gotchas with shared iPad, but yes, Jump School can um, uh, manage them. The one thing I'd watch with shared iPad is the the apps and how the apps behave with being offloaded and loaded um, onto a shared iPad. Um, you have to. Um, okay, and then um, let's. So Apple certified training, um, we, we try and do the whole ecosystem and um, so we do Apple certified training. Uh, we have uh, Karen Pastro here in the slide, we have uh, certified professional learning. Um, we can come in and do curriculum support and we also uh, obviously as I've mentioned we can put uh, devices into Apple School Manager, into Apple DEP for you and uh, we also will do from uh, cradle to end of life, so we can put screen protectors on for you, so we can do other services, screen protectors, uh, cases, asset tags and the like at the be end, uh, beginning of life. At the end of the life we have a um, at the end of life, we have a uh, relationship, uh, a partnership with Sustain IT, so we can um, have devices reused and um, uh, sold on maybe, or recycled depending on what's appropriate for the device, and you can get value out of your devices, uh, your fleet that's being replaced. Um, and this meets uh, Australian e-waste regulations. So, um, if we got any other questions, or, or should we? Um uh, any, uh, any other questions? I, I think we'll, we'll, we'll um, take the remaining questions and we'll, put, we'll follow those up in our email. So thank you very much. Thanks for joining me, Francesca. And, uh, thank, um, thank, thank you for having me, Richard. And we will, um, we'll, we'll follow up with a, 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 an email with uh, answers. Thanks for your time.